Okay, so today I will be analysing the poem Verses Written on Her Deathbed at Bath to Her Husband in London by Mary Monk. So first, a little bit about the poet. So the poem was written shortly before her death. At the time, her husband George was in London and realising she would never see him again, she decided to write the poem as a goodbye to show him her everlasting love for him. She asks him not to mourn and for him to see her death not so much as the end of her life, but merely the end of her suffering. Mary uses her personal voice to display her own thoughts and feelings through her words. So in this case, we could say that the speaker is in fact the poet and that um, the poem has autobiographical elements. And so in 1715, um, Mary Monk died. So the deep meaning. Death should not be seen as the ending of life, but as a release from suffering. The speaker sees it as an escape from her pain, and she believes that the love that she shares with her husband will live on, and that they will see each other again. So as I mentioned before, um, the speaker, the poet, presents death not as the ending of life, but as the ending of her suffering. So the entire poem is one stanza long, but I've just split it up into two so that it's easier to analyse. Thou, who dost all my worldly thoughts employ, thou pleasing source of all my earthly joy, thou tenderest husband and thou best of friends, to thee this first, this last adieu I send, at length the conqueror death asserts his right, and will forever veil me from thy sight. He woos me to him with a cheerful grace, and not one terror clouds his meagre face. He promises a lasting rest from pain, and shews that all life's fleeting joys are vain. The eternal scenes of heaven he sets in view, and tells me that no other joys are true. So first we have the anaphora of thou, which establishes the uh, prominence of George in Mary's mind. Mary constantly addresses her husband and uses direct address. This reassures us of her love for her husband and the fact that this poem is dedicated to him. And then we have the repetition of all, which emphasises the fact that um, George is everything to the speaker, and he always will be. The, the superlatives, um, tenderest, best, used compliment George as though she were insisting that he is the best husband that she could ever have. And then we also have the personification of death as a conqueror, which presents the speaker's struggle with illness as a war. Although it is not much of a war as she submits easily, something which is seen as she presents death as having a cheerful grace and he promises a lasting rest from pain. So she is easily wooed by death. And this reflects the extent of her suffering, as she is beyond struggling, and she would rather die than continue in her current pain. She attempts to convince her husband that death should not be feared, but welcomed. And this is seen as she shows him her belief in the afterlife. She contrasts the fleeting joys of life on earth to the eternal scenes of heaven. However, death's suggestion that no other joys are true other than those in death in heaven is quite clearly false because um, of the extent of her affection for her husband. So this is uh, this struggle between love and between the hope for happiness in heaven is something that is uh, quite clear in the poem and emphasizes the extent of um, the speaker's love for her husband because it's so powerful it's able to make her hesitate towards um, choosing death. Heaven is used as a way of soothing the pain of loss. Also the struggle that we see in the speaker between the appeal of heaven with its eternal scenes and her husband, emphasises the strength of her love further, as he is what has caused her slight hesitation towards 
welcoming death, as I previously mentioned. Death is presented as being a guide between life and afterlife. Although he is described as a conqueror, as seen in the personification, he is made to seem as a curiously polite and charming one through the use of verbs like woos, promises, and um, I think that's shows, but at the time it was spelt differently. Only the verb asserts, which I, yeah, I've highlighted it on the fifth line, um, reminds us that death is still a powerful and unstoppable force, no matter his charming and kind appearance. The process of dying is portrayed as being a gentle one, something which is seen in um, forever veil me from thy sight. And this is a euphemism for dying. However, something is preventing the speaker from willingly departing with death. Although George is only one man, he still has a great power on his side, and that is love. No matter how hard her sickness has become to bear, Mary's desire to remain with George is as seductive as any heavenly temptation with its eternal scenes. Rhyming couplets um, are used throughout the poem, which mirrors the strong connection between Mary and her husband. Also, every one of the rhymes in the poem is a full rhyme, which serves to highlight the strength of the bond between Mary and George. So um, this is the second part. It's still one full stanza. But love, fond love, would yet resist his power, would fain a while defer the parting hour. He brings thy morning image to my eyes and would obstruct my journey to the skies. But say, thou dearest, thou unwearied friend, say, shouldst thou grieve to see my sorrows end? Thou knowst a painful pilgrimage I've passed, and shouldst thou grieve that rest is come at last, rather rejoice to see me shake off life and die as I have lived, thy faithful wife. The verb resist implies that the possibility of love combating, that, that there is a possibility of love combating death, who is the greatest force that there can be. And this emphasizes the strength of the love shared between Mary and her husband. Love seems to revel in thwarting death's desires for as long as he can. Fain means gladly or with pleasure. So that um, this emphasizes love's um, wanting to resist death. No matter how hard her sickness has become to bear, Mary's desire to remain with George is as seductive as any heavenly temptation. Mary calls George unwearied. Um, although superficially this could be seen as a compliment, beneath the surface she says it, she says it with a slightly bitter tone of voice as she is reminding him that he is perfectly healthy and therefore incapable of understanding what she is going through. However, this bitter tone is softened by the repetition of friend, a reminder of all the time that they have shared together. She calls life a painful pilgrimage. This metaphor implies that, to, that the speaker um, simply existing day to day is long and arduous. Pilgrimage has connotations of duty, obligation and sacrifice. She could be indicating here that she endures and struggles against sickness out of obligation to her husband. So the speaker could be trying to show her husband that he is stopping her from finding an escape from her suffering. She is trying to persuade him here that he must let go of her in order for her to find relief. The use of rhetorical questions build to her persuasive argument. She is making him ask himself how could he possibly deny her death when it is presented as rest and contrasts to her painful pilgrimage. Mary understands that George might be reluctant to accept her death, which is why she speaks in the imperative death when she says, rejoice to see me shake off life. This 
um, the R alliteration also gives weight to her instruction. The speaker then uses another euphemism for death, shake off life. Um, the words are quite lively, as though dying is not the end, but a continuation of life, like a snake shedding off its skin or a tree shaking off its leaves. The last line of the poem is very positive. She wants her husband to remember her as a loving, loyal wife and not as she was when she was suffering and in pain. Okay, so now I have topic areas that I've arranged if this poem were to come up. So the first topic area I would focus on is how the speaker compliments her husband and reminds him of her utter devotion for him. Her last adieu is positive. It is only a goodbye, suggesting that they may see each other again. And for the second topic area, death is personified and presented as someone who will take her on a journey towards a positive outcome. And for the final topic area, she focuses on how the only obstruction stopping her from her positive outcome is him and the love that they share. She is asking him to let her go and to see her as being his faithful and loving wife, that he should celebrate her life and the fact that she is no longer in pain. And that is the end. Thank you very much for watching.